No, he wasn't right. Um, the facts of this case are complex at the moment um, because of the complex nature of the legal entanglement into which this country has got itself. Um, I would just put it this way. The uh, uh, Commission decided these two men uh, were actively involved with Al-Qaeda. The security services cannot, they say, deliver this evidence in open court. It was delivered in closed session there. Um, and so we're in a bind. And I just put it as follows. We're in a bind because we apparently cannot extradite these two young men, Pakistani nationals, who are wanting to harm, we're told, are wanting to harm people in this country. We're not able to extradite them to Pakistan, their own country, in case they are tortured there. I would just put it this way. Uh, we are now going to have to pay for two Al-Qaeda associates to stay in this country to protect their human rights, defending their rights, I believe, over the rights of the people of this country. I think you have to look at this perfectly plainly, and I would say you can't put it any stronger than this. Any society that wanted to survive would not behave like this, would not defend their enemies over their own people, would not protect their enemies better than they protect their own people. But it would send no them away regardless. Would send them away regardless. regardless of what happens. And if, if the new Home Secretary uh, has uh, any sense about this, and I very much hope she has, she will realise that no government that wants to survive would behave like All this. Right. It is preposterous to, to do that. bring it back to the point which the other panelists all seem to disagree with you on that the fact of what might happen to them if they return to Pakistan doesn't worry you or doesn't wouldn't well, inhibit no. you from sending them no, there. of Is course right? it worries me of course I'm not in favor of torture nobody's in favor of torture however we have to decide whose rights uh, should trump uh, uh, other people's do the rights of the British people trump the rights of Al Qaeda terrorists who come to this country and then claim rights they wouldn't afford to you and me I'm not sure they do we have a problem in this country firstly because as, as Shami quite rightly says Pakistan is an unstable state its prison uh, system is unstable we'd have to have assurances they could be kept in prison Rashid Ralph walked out of prison Absolutely. other people uh, have been kept in prison there however we, we have the following situation. Not only can we not deport to Pakistan, we can't deport uh, um, a famous Al-Qaeda cleric who's still in this country to Jordan. We can't deport people. We, it took years to deport somebody to France in the 1990s. This is absurd. We have to make a decision about whether or not this country really wants to be the retirement home for all would-be jihadis. Oh, okay. Obviously very happy with each other. Um, uh, their appearances so far have suggested that. And I think that voters for both parties are going to feel very let down by this. Uh, this is not what they voted for. Um, and let me just give you an example. Let me give you one quick example. Uh, this program, it's nice to have two representatives of the governing coalition on this week. Um, but what happens in the future on a program like this? Will those uh, voters who voted uh, Conservative at this election be happy when their representative is Simon Hughes of the Lib Dems, for instance? Or will the Liberal Democrats be happy when their man up on the panel is Michael Howard? I'm not sure they will be. I'm not sure that anyone's very happy about this. Now, we, admittedly, this is the best of a bad job. But, uh, and, and I think, like most of the country, we wish this coalition well. But the number of compromises that are going to be happening along the way, the number uh, of things that have already been, uh, as Caroline says, shunted off to commissions, almost every single major issue uh, has been shunted off into a commission. Mr. Sir, now, sir, hang on a second. But, um, Ming, Ming, Ming Campbell said, Ming, Ming Campbell said this was done in the national... We'll come to that. Ming Campbell said this was in the national interest. Are you saying you endorse it, you wish it well because it is in the national interest, or do you think it's not in the national interest? Well, look, I mean, I wish it well because they're a government who just come in and I hope they do a good job of it, like anyone else does. But there are a lot of people well, in this country, like it, but it? there are a lot of people in this country, like myself, uh, who believe now that they're effectively not represented. Uh, most conservative voters in this country are not represented. Most conservative voters in this country don't feel they have any, uh, as far as I can see, uh, uh, um, uh, profit from the Clegg Alliance. And now, the worst thing about this, if I may say so, is the following, is that the, the political parties spend the whole election talking about minute differences between themselves, actually sort of technical differences, but they make them huge. And then they come into government like this, and they say, actually, this was what we wanted all along. We forgot. This was actually the ideal. Well, in which case, why didn't you admit during the campaign there wasn't much that you were arguing about? Theresa May. The, the, Narinda's original question was about have the core supporters been sold out? No, they have not. 
The three words that underpin this document are freedom, fairness and responsibility. And freedom, fairness and responsibility have always underpinned what the Conservative Party believes in. The man up there, in, 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 yes. No, the man in the centre there, you, yes, that's right. Uh, does Douglas uh, therefore agree with PR if he feels he loads of people are not uh, represented in this country? I, I have I, a feeling you don't. I, no, I, can't, I do. Um, I, I happen to think that a very great number of people in this country now are utterly disenfranchised from politics. And that these three parties argue over really very small amounts of ground. That you can vote, you could pretty much vote for any three of them. And as you can see, any of the three can make a pact with any of the others. There's not actually, there's not actually very much difference between them. I would love to see the British uh, political system, the British public involved in politics again. Genuinely interested in it. And not in this way of saying, as all free parties do, you know, we are for uh, uh, individuals and freedom. And and anyone can right. say that. Yes. Anyone can say it. Everybody is for that. But point, please, point let's see some proper interesting difference among our politics. I agree with both members of the governing coalition on this one. Um, uh, God, the thing is, it is, it is, uh, <laughs> uh, it is, it is a, a, as Caroline said, it's a stupid joke. The problem is the joke's on us. Uh, it's us that's going to have to pick up the bill for this. Labour did spend uh, in the most disgraceful way. Uh, and particularly in those last months. And I very much hope that political blame is levelled where it should be. And that the public uh, demand that to be the case. Now, uh, but we, we have to look at where we are. Uh, the gentleman in the audience is right. The political parties were not and have not been honest with the public. You quite rightly say the, 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 the uh, £6 billion pound cuts count, count for something like, I think it's 1% of uh, the deficit uh, uh, that we have. Um, when the emergency budget comes through, I very much hope the uh, governing coalition rises, they're going to have to massively uh, up the pressure. Uh, to reduce that spending. Uh, it has to be at least something like 20% cuts in every government department would be the least that you needed to get on top of this. It is true. We were not told the real facts about this. We should demand them now. All right. And Quickly, I mean, the, the Tory party, which has a terrible record of homophobia, uh, of the kind of votes that uh, the new Home Secretary uh, voted along, uh, including, by the way, uh, the Section 28 was not about uh, teaching homosexuality, it was, among other things, uh, teaching young men how not to contract uh, fatal diseases. Uh, it's always put as if it was some kind of advertisement for it. The Tory party has a terrible track record on this. However, they have noticed that under Labour, uh, a, a lot of this changed. Labour did introduce, uh, got, you've got to give them credit to it, very progressive, decent legislation on this. The Conservatives have realised the country has changed and they have quite rightly realised they should change with it. The only thing I would add very quickly on that is that uh, for all uh, LGBT campaigners and others who, who sympathise with them, I think there's a, it's very important whatever we think about this, that we also do not try to shut down debate. One of the problems that's happened recently is that gay rights campaigners and their friends and sympathisers have tried to sort of get out of the public right. sphere anything they don't agree with. Thank uh, you. I, I'm against certain opinions, but I still think we have to allow them to be there.